Good evening, and welcome to the September 16th Wednesday night Bible class of the Boone Church of Christ. Tonight, we're going to talk about learning to be dependent on Jesus. God calls us to partner with him in his work in his world. And this storyline is throughout God's word. Paul partnered with God in his ministry, and Paul called his readers to partner with him in God's ministry. Paul was an ambassador for Christ, and we're called to be ambassadors for Jesus as well. Jesus himself calls us to be salt and light. Now here's the thing. Partnering with God as Christ's spiritual body in this world is a formidable task. In fact, it's more than we can do. More than we can do? What are you saying? Are you saying that that means that God calls us to do more than we can do? He gives us more than we can do? Well, yes, he does. Listen to the following verse from the verse of the day this past week. It's in Luke chapter 9, verse 13. He replied, you give them something to eat. They answered, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all of this crowd. Here's some thoughts on the verse from the author of the verse of the day. I love the way that Jesus gets his disciples' attention. You feed them, boys. Of course, they knew they couldn't. Yet Jesus showed them that if they brought their meager resources to him, that they could do amazing things. When the big picnic was over, each of them got to pick up a basket full of leftovers from the table of God's grace. Let's remember that it isn't the challenge or the resources that limit us. It's our unwillingness to bring what we have to Jesus and trust that he will do something with us to bless others in ways we couldn't have dreamed. We're talking about cultivating a dependency on Jesus. We know that we need to do it. But really, when you think about becoming more dependent, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? After all, don't we grow up with pretty much the opposite goal? Don't we want to become independent? At some point in our young lives, we want an allowance. What we really want is the freedom to be independent and in how we spend money. Later, we want our driver's license. Driving is fun. What we really want, though, is the independence that having a driver's license brings. We want our children to learn to be independent, to be able to stand on their own. We also want financial freedom and the independence that it brings. But when it comes to our faith, well, it's a little different, isn't it? It's true that we should want to own our faith. Our faith should be ours. It needs to be independent of anyone else's. But growing in faith recognizes the importance of learning to be dependent on Jesus. Dependence on Jesus isn't about checking out of responsibility to ourselves and to others. Some people have that frame of mind, I'm afraid. But that's really dumping on God. We may be bothered with something in life and we're told to go to God in prayer, and we do. And then our attitude might be, well, I've let God know. I've, I've left it in his hands. I don't need to do anything more. God doesn't ask us to do that. He doesn't ask us to just dump it on him and not worry about it. Again, he wants to partner with us. He wants to give us the strength to work through difficulties in life. Dependence on Jesus isn't about checking out of responsibility. The fact is we won't grow into adult spiritual children, talking about being mature and equipped to serve without a dependence on Jesus. The kind of dependence that, that relies on him for the strength and uh, the fortitude to be able to deal with things in life. Even Jesus' disciples needed to learn to be dependent on him. Let's look at one of the greatest lessons about our need to understand and accept being dependent on Jesus. It's the feeding of the 5,000. <clears> We're going to look at Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all that they had done. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going 
that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So think about how this story begins. Just think about the setting, if you will. The disciples are just, they're just worn out. They're absolutely worn out. They've been on their ministry tour. They've come back. They've reported to Jesus. The crowds were all around them. They didn't even have time to eat. They were tired. And so Jesus said, let's go off to our, uh, by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. Jesus was tired. The apostles were tired. So they left my boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving. And people from many towns ran along the shore ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat. <clears throat> and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon. Now you can imagine how worn out these guys are. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, You feed them. Can you imagine that? Being so tired, just looking for a place to get away, not even having time to eat yourself. And then Jesus challenges them in this way. You feed them. With what, they asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all of these people. How much bread do you have, he asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people set down in groups on the green grass. So they, so they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. What a challenge Jesus gave to the disciples. You feed them. He asked them to do more than they could do. Have you ever heard anyone say that God will never give you more than you can handle? That's just not true. God often gives us more than we can handle. There's example after example in the Bible of this. You feed them. There was no food around and there was no way for the disciples to go and get any. The disciples simply couldn't make this happen. They were at a loss. John records some additional information in John chapter 6, verses 5 through 9. Jesus saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for all he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There is a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? <clears throat> what had been the disciples' solution to this problem? Initially, they just said, send the people away. Then Jesus challenged them. What did Philip bring to the, the whole discussion? He brought some mathematical calculations. But where was his focus? His focus was on what couldn't be done. Again, Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. How about Andrew? Andrew found some food and brought it to Jesus. He did something, and he was hoping that something might be done. Uh, but then he just wavered. Listen to what he says. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus' challenge to the disciples was beyond their capability. He gave them more than they could handle. What did Jesus do? Did he just tell the disciples, you know what, guys, never mind, I'll handle it. Did he just dismiss the disciples? No. Jesus involved the disciples. He tasked the disciples. 
They had to go out and find the resources. They had to discover that there was something to bring to Jesus. All of their searching yielded five loaves and two fish, but they had to go out and look for it. Then they had to coordinate the logistics. They had to seat what may have been an excess of 15,000 people in groups of 50 or 100. Then they had to serve the people. Can you imagine how long that must have taken to serve all of those people? And through all of this, they had to exercise obedient faith. So let's look at two lessons from this story. The first we just mentioned. This is a lesson about faith, about the kind of faith that Jesus wants to see in us. What does Jesus need us to learn? He needs us to learn to see life around us, to see our own lives from a spiritual perspective. The disciples were struggling here. They decided what could not be done, and that was feed the people. And they decided what could be done. And that was to just send the people away. They did what we might do. They assessed their resources. And they acknowledged their limitations. What was the problem with their approach? Well, see, they restricted their perspective. They restricted their perspective to the physical circumstances they were faced with. And doing that just doesn't leave room for God to work in our lives. We acknowledge right away, I think early on in our Christian lives, I, I'm sure we do, we acknowledge that we're saved through faith. So since we acknowledge that we're saved through faith, we need to learn to live by faith. We've got to learn to see our lives and life around us from a spiritual perspective. There was one thing that the disciples did, though, that is very important, and it's something that we should learn from them, too. They were struggling, no doubt. But what did they do? What they did was to put their faith in Jesus. When challenged, they didn't quit. They chose to live by faith. And when the disciples placed their faith in Jesus, their perceived shortage, these five loaves and the two fish, what did the perceived shortage actually become? It became a huge surplus. Everyone ate all that they wanted. And each disciple picked up a basket full of loaves and fish for themselves. The second lesson is about dependence. We need to learn to be dependent upon Jesus. This lesson is obviously closely linked to the first lesson. Faith in Jesus means learning to be dependent upon Jesus. There's an important aspect in this. Learning to be dependent upon Jesus doesn't mean that we have nothing to do. Jesus tasks us as his body, and we're to reflect his love to the world. And in order to do that, Jesus equips us. So living by faith begins with an admission that whatever resources that we bring isn't going to be enough. What is required is approaching Jesus with dependent faith. And dependent faith is exhibited in obedience and trust. And one more thing about faith and obedience and about how they work together. In this story, there's a verse that I think is crucial. <clears throat> Mark chapter 6, verse 41. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. First in this verse, Jesus himself acknowledges the source of all that is good, the source of those blessings, and he looks to the source of those blessings. That's an exercise in dependence right there in just Jesus' prayer. But listen to what happens next. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so that they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. Now, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but there's some phrasing in there that's particularly important. And depending on which translation that you might be following along in, you may or may not be seeing this. But the language that's here in this text, in the verse that I read, and the translation that I read, is crucial. Because this is the language, and, and, and it captures the proper tense in the, in the original text. He 
kept giving the bread to the disciples so that they could distribute it to the people. What's the significance of that? When Jesus had uh, the disciples seat all of the people in groups of 50 or 100, that, of course, required faith. And as Jesus did that, he still had the five fish and the two loaves. In other words, uh, or rather the, the five loaves and the two fish. In other words, the disciples didn't see everything up front. They had to act out on faith. They had to act in faith to, to follow Jesus' and Jesus's instructions about seating the people and bringing all of the logistics of all of this together. He kept giving means that Jesus kept distributing the food. They didn't see a big pile of bread up there, and they didn't see a big pile of fish up there. All they saw was what Jesus had. And it was in Jesus' hands that all of this multiplied into whatever was necessary and even way more than what was needed. The point was, and the point is, just like it is for them, they had to keep going back to Jesus. They had to continually be dependent upon Jesus. There's no way they could have carried everything they needed in one, at one time to the people to serve them. They had to keep going back to Jesus to get what they needed. It's the same thing with you and I. Learning to be dependent upon Jesus means we continually go back to him. He is the source of and we, we need to, to, to learn to rely on him in continued dependence. And it's always by faith because we just don't see everything up front. But Jesus will supply our needs. He had promised the disciples that, and he promises us that today. You and I can never and will never become the person that God wants us to be on our own. So there are two things that are going to happen in our lives to make sure that we understand. First, God is going to give us more than we can handle. Like Paul's thorn in the flesh. Second, God is going to equip us to move forward. Just like when he told Paul, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. We know we absolutely know, and, and if we don't, we just need to know that Jesus is faithful and that he will never give up on us. What we need to do is exactly what the disciples did, and that was to never give up on Jesus. We have to live faithful dependence on Jesus, and he'll use whatever faith we bring to him.